Welcome to episode 44, ladies and gentlemen. We are joined here with Fuck You, David. <laughs> I could give you a million and one reasons why you shouldn't leave my ass. If you can't overcome all the feelings, then you've got to do just that. I'll give you your space. Maybe you'll come back. So insecure. So insecure. So insecure. <laughs> Uh, hey, I'm here on the po- on the po- podcast, dude. What's the most annoying thing a kid's ever done to you? Like, uh, what do you think? Like, out of all the, I know that you hate children, right? Like, let's yeah. just start there. Well, I don't hate children. I do, but like, there's just a lot that can go wrong with them very fast, and I try to avoid that. True. Uh, it's more that I hate myself, so I don't want to be around the children. True. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. But the most annoying thing, dude, fucking, there was this kid that I knew growing up. Uh, cause where I grew up, like the, the football games, the high school football games, like everyone in town shows up, right? Yeah. Real small town shit. Real small town shit. It's like the community thing to go to football games, high school football games. And there was always this little kid there that was the sibling of one of the people that played on the team that like knew she was a little kid. So you couldn't, you couldn't, couldn't like fuck her. with her. Yeah. You couldn't hit her. Yeah. Uh, and she would just say just the fucking meanest shit to people, dude, and just argue with everybody. That that quality in kids, that's the most annoying thing. When they know that you can't do anything. How old was she? Like seven? Yeah, somewhere around like there. Just Between seven school? and ten. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 Where she's smart enough to know kind of how to back talk, but not smart enough to know that she shouldn't back talk. That's my niece right now, dude. My niece is like eight. And uh she does this thing. I actually think she's hilarious, but other people fucking hate it. Um, where she does this thing where she becomes an NPC and she'll just go up to people and she'll go, Hi! Hi! <laughs> and then she'll like walk into walls and shit like a Sims character. <laughs> Um, we were at Avatar 2. Have you seen this movie? I have not yet. Dude, no. actually. It's like fucking three and, three and some change long. Three hours and fucking. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. too much. It's too much. It's too much. It's for sure too much. Uh, there's three acts, essentially. Like, it goes dark, and you go, oh, that's the end of act one. Like, it doesn't tell you, but you go, okay. And then it goes dark the second time, and you go, okay, that's the end of act two. And then you have, like, a, th- a whole third act. What the fuck, dude? What um, the fuck? Dude, so many people died in this movie. I was Perfect. I was shocked. I was shocked. That, like, every in the battles, every five seconds, someone else would die. Really? Brutally. I, I heard that it's uh, story-wise kind of bland and boring, but, like, the visuals in it are fucking incredible. But wasn't the first Avatar? Yeah. Like, yeah, story-wise, it's pretty it's, bad because it's, it's Fergalee or Pocahontas. Yeah, it's dancing, Dances with Wolves or whatever right, the fuck. Like, right. it's all the same, right? We're just there to see the fucking big-ass fish in this one, right? That's what we're here for. Yeah. But during the previews of that one, uh, <laughs> my niece, also sitting next to me in the movie theater, um, John Wick, the preview for the new John Wick Ooh, comes on. Hell yeah, brother. And this lady starts interpretive dancing to John Wick in her seat. <laughs> It's like dude, 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 you're telling dude, me dude, dude, uh, you dude, dude, don't, dude. Fuck yeah, John Wick. And like, and we were in the middle of it, and I and I went like this to her, and she like looked at me, and I shot her, and she died. <laughs> <laughs> That's my kind of interpretive dance. That's amazing. It's like this is ridiculous. I was dying. Dude. Action in, interpretive dance. Um, Dave, it's been a while since you've been on the podcast. Yeah, it's been a minute. And you really helped me hold it down when uh, Cougar decided to step away. So represent. Shout out Cougar. Represent to you, son. That's oh. I'm trying to praise you. I'm, Thanks, buddy. Cougar stepped away from the podcast. That's bad. That's evil. That's like Satan. Satan. Wait, are you saying Cougar's Satan? No. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's not get a hold of ourselves, right? <laughs> Ahead of ourselves. Um, what's your What's your life been like, Dave? What you been up to? Uh, well, when's the last time I saw you before Aspen? Yeah, because I think the last one we went on, we were talking about how you're going to go find bears. Dude, I searched all summer for bears. I searched all summer. Every one of these motherfuckers had, like, a story about seeing a bear, running into a bear. I'm sure some of them were full of shit, but, like, everybody had some bear story, and I wanted one so bad, dude. Thank God I never ran into any Ooh, actual bears. But, like, God. I was probably the one that tried hardest. I was, like, climbing mountains looking for bears. Like, anytime I'd be in the forest and a twig would snap, I'd be like, Bears? Where are they? Come here, bears. You're on the lookout for bears. You never found one. No. I even spent some time in Montana, and I think almost found a bear because there was some very scary noises coming from the wilderness, and that's <laughs> oh, that's when I realized I didn't want to find any bear. Like breathing? 
Uh, just like huffing and then like, uh, you know, kind of like, <laughs> and then like just twigs snapping and shit. But when I was in Montana, like those are grizzlies out there and I don't want to fuck with grizzlies. So I was, uh, I was like digging like in this big tractor and stuff. So I would like stand on top of my tractor and make a bunch of noise and get in and fucking drive it around. Cause I was like, if I'm going to fight a bear, I want to use this fucking tractor. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's just black bears in Aspen. Yeah, only black bears. I think some people said there's grizzlies, but I'd like predominantly it's black bears. Like if you huh. to Google and stuff, it's like mostly black bears. And here's a question I have about Aspen. Yeah, what's up? Okay. Um, it probably was the movie Aspen Extreme film there. You bet it fucking was the greatest movie ever. They know it's like the most '90s movie. And is it the most Aspen thing for people to talk oh, about? Oh yeah, oh yeah. There was a poster in the house that I lived in that has like a bunch of Aspen like achievements and stuff that's there, and uh, that was one of the things. Fun fact: also, Hunter S. Thompson tried to run for sheriff of wow. Aspen. Yeah, he wanted to like get rid of all the roads and pave them over with grass, and everybody could only walk or use a bike there. And like, if you were a local in Aspen, you were only allowed to go like fishing if somebody from the like, if you're an outsider, somebody from the town had to essentially, like, sponsor you right. to be able to do stuff there. And if you fucked up that, it was, like, on the local person who sponsored you. It was, like, their fault, mm. and they would get in trouble for it and stuff. Now, did you ever meet anyone who's from Aspen? Yeah, I met this lady, Sarah, who, like, one time I was meditating in the park uh, by this river because it's, like, a nice trickle. It's so relaxing. And this lady just comes up and is like, Hi! Uh, and I was like, hi. Hello. And she started talking to me about, uh, she was like very soft spoken lady. <laughs> and she starts talking to me about the animals and how she communicates with the deer and stuff there. <laughs> and oh, oh, oh. and they the, the, get this. So she's telling me all this stuff, like super, like just talking like this, very nice and relaxed. And then this person rides by on a bicycle going what she thought was a little too fast. And she flips 180, dude. It's like, oh, the fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there and the guy on the bike yells back to her. He's like, it's a bike path. <laughs> uh, she keeps yelling at him, dude, as he's riding away. It was beautiful. It was fucking amazing. Like super kind liberals, but once they see you fucking some shit you, up. You break their rules, it's game over, son. Over. It's game over. Game over, man. That's interesting. Did you meet anyone else who was like straight out of Aspen? or Straight out of Aspen. Crazy motherfucking name Karen. Sarah. Uh, uh, yeah. We were close. I wish her name was Karen. That would have been fucking perfect. But uh, n- what was not- her name? Her name is Sarah. Okay. Shout out, Sarah. I didn't really... Uh, she said she's a native lady, but she uh, was white as shit. Uh, well, just because she's... Like, she was, saying, she was saying she was Native American? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you can be white and be Native American. Represent colonial natives. Uh, <laughs> uh The colonizer kind. Uh, but not... I didn't really meet a whole lot of other Aspen locals. The Aspen locals kind of keep to them selves it's mostly like people that want to tell you that they moved aspen because they're loaded uh <laughs> which unfortunately like the... sarah was not loaded otherwise i would have been like that's my old millionaire right there mm. that's my old that's what i was looking for while i was there I was you think she that. was trying to fuck you no i think she's probably just lonely yeah i mean maybe she's trying to fuck yeah you know what for the sake of this hell yeah she's hell trying yeah. to fuck me mm. shout uh, out sarah <laughs> Shout out, Sarah. But yeah, she told me about some opera shit that she was like a part of because she like went to Scotland and was working with like Gaelic singers or Gaelic singers, however you say that fucking word. So even though she isn't telling you she's rich, she's telling you that she's awesome. Yeah, but she was like, "Yeah, hey, I live in like a studio apartment in Aspen and shit," and I was like, oh, "Damn it!" Because dude, I would I would walk by the river. I'd play a game with my buddy Jamie. Uh, he was one of the interns, and we'd walk before shows and get rich. Uh, and she would tell me, or he, fuck me, sorry. Uh, it's been a minute. Forgot how to speak good. It's okay. I don't know how to English, uh, but we'd walk along the river and like look at houses and be like, how much do you think that cost? And and guess, and we were never even close. Like I, there was a house, I was like, fucking probably something stupid, like 22 million, 44 million. Poo! Yeah, like we, I couldn't have guessed the price high enough if I was like trying. How'd you find out the price? We'd go on Zillow and shit and nice. look at houses. Nice. Yeah. That's wild, dude. $44 yeah. million dollars for that house. And don't get me wrong. These houses are beautiful. Like six bedroom houses oh, and stuff. Course. But like still like $44 million. That's for... money we're never going to see. Never. Never going to yeah. see. Fucking now, never. if we're if everything lines up and we're lucky, maybe. Right. 
but most likely never going to see $44 million. Now, here is the main question that I wanted to ask you and I originally wanted to ask about Aspen. Is there anything about Ted Bundy there? Obviously, bad guy, terrible, serial killer, but spent a good amount of time in Aspen, jumped out of their courthouse from the second window. Oh, that was um, in Aspen? Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, so he so that makes he got, sense. It's pretty po down. Like it makes no sense after being there. Well, and there's like two roads in and out of Aspen, right? Like it's it's yeah, it's so that's why they like shut, one going one way, one going the other way. So they shut everything down after he uh, jumped out of the the window, and he like spent like days in the woods and shit. I forget how he got out, but yeah, that was in Aspen. Yeah, they have uh, it's rich as fuck now because they've got like Balenciaga, Prada, Louis Vuitton, like all of those high end stores in downtown Aspen, and those are like the only thing. Like, there's no fast food, there's no like restaurants like that. Like, it's just rich people shit, yeah. and then like nature shit fucking mountains and ski resorts and shit it's fascinating that this isn't true totally but like the wealthier you get the more people really start to care about their health like i feel like the poorer you are and again that's not everybody but like typically because i think you probably have the time and the resources right but you're right because there's always like old people running and stuff in aspen like old people doing like super active shit like biking and they've got like Every Forty-four kid million saw, dollar houses. Yeah, every kid that I saw there rode a one wheel. Like they would ride a one wheel and carry their skateboard to the skate park and then jump off their one wheel and just leave it to the side and no. skateboard around. Yeah, dude. No, dude yeah. Just jumping off of it, they're like, "Fuck this one." Wheel. Yeah, I yeah. Can get another just one. leave them at the, the fucking edges, and I was always like, "Yeah, you can get another one." Let me just, <laughs> just skype one of those real quick. Your ghetto day is coming back. Yeah, yeah. I just because, oh, you know how much I've always wanted a fucking one wheel. Well, and those kids can buy a new one, so so what if you take it? So what if you take it and ride off on it? I wish, dude. Um, you know, before we get into kind of some main topics, actually, no, we'll go main topics and then we'll we'll, we'll close on some spirituality because I'm kind of curious, Dave, about your spiritual journey. But I transcended in Aspen. I, you know what? To be quite honest with you, you do have seemed changed. Mm. And that's a really bad gra- gra- grammar way to put that. Can't talk either. Your house seemed changed. <laughs> <laughs> but you do seem like you have spent a lot of time. And granted, you were spending a lot of time alone in like Seattle and stuff. Uh, but it's different because I like I lived with Jay and shit. Yeah. For sure. But yeah. now it just kind of seems like you've. I don't know. I want to speak. I don't want to speak too much to your change, but it just seems like you really are. You really have found that kindness that I think you were trying to seek. Mm. And maybe that comes from like inner peace. Um, but I don't want to speak to that until the end. Okay. Uh, let's talk about Jake Paul, man. Fuck yeah. Jake let's Paul do it. signs to the PFL, Professional Fighters League. Ooh, bold move. It's probably, would you say the PFL at this point is the second MMA organization? Or do you think that's still Bellator? I would honestly consider one. One is up there. I just uh, think the PFL's made moves. That's fair. Anthony I, uh, Pettis. Yeah. Paul, Kayla Harrison, like, kind of seems like they're building. And their their format is so different than everyone else. Like, you remember when we were watching their 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 fights and they track their punches and kicks on screen the whole time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird and wild. Weird, yeah. Um, one, one also has other sports like kickboxing and Muay Thai and shit, which is kind of interesting versus PFL's, like, strictly MMA, it seems. Which is weird that Jake I Paul think. signed with them, right? I think you're right. I think that the only thing I've ever seen PFL do is MMA. It's... It's weird that he signed with them because he never, like, like he fought, like, fighters. In, I mean, obviously, he beat Anderson Silva, uh, Crazy. which is pretty fucking wild. Go Jake Paul. But, like. And Tyron Woodley twice. It, yeah. Like, and, and knocked Tyron Woodley the fuck out. Uh, but it's weird that they, that he ha- didn't, like, fight anyone that was, like, in boxing, boxing besides, you know, Tyron and Anderson. Yeah. I mean, you could argue that, like, a Nissan Gib, right? But, again, he's a YouTuber, so he's not really on that same level. Right. But a Nissan Gib, I think, already had a fight professionally before that. But, but it wasn't like he fought, like, Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, but he still hasn't fought, like, a boxer. Yeah. Right? Like, he could fight Tommy Fury, but, you know, Tommy Fury, not a boxer. So Did you watch? Uh, I think he would beat the shit out of Tommy Fury. I think so, too. Did you ever watch... Mayweather and uh, KSI's little brother was at Deji. Deji? Yeah. yeah. I didn't watch it, but I heard about it. Dude, it was like Floyd Mayweather was just making fun of him the entire time. <laughs> like, it, it was so much different than Logan versus Floyd. Well, uh, on the Impulsive podcast, Mike Malak was saying that Floyd was going back and doing his taxes in the corner. 
essentially like in between rounds he'd just go back and do his taxes yeah it really was kind of like that yeah i just imagine him just like working out essentially like doing push-ups and just like essentially just like working out in the middle of the fight. deji's fucking trying hard and floyd's like dancing <laughs> and like da, 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 putting on a show just partying um so here's what jake paul has offered for the pfl him it would he has offered to fight in both a boxing match first okay. and then secondarily in an MMA fight, Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz? Nate Diaz is a free agent now, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Recently released from the UFC. Still wants to fight. Says he's a, He says he's out there looking for opportunities. Him and Jake have been pawn, you know, John back and forth for a while. Of course. Um, what do you think about that? In a boxing match, I think he for sure wins. Because uh, I don't think Nate has the kind of power to to stop him, and Nate's getting a little bit older and slower for sure. True. Um, so that I think Jake would walk away with that fight, but Nate, that's that's a a fun fight because Nate's a dog, you know, and he's always gonna fucking get after it, which I kind of like. Uh, and it would be cool to see. I just after you know Anderson, I I feel like he beats Nate pretty handily in boxing. And it would suck to see one of my heroes, another one of my heroes, have that happen. Do you think he finishes Nate, though? Because he didn't finish Anderson. Didn't finish um, Woodley the first time, right? I, I, I kind of have a hard time seeing him knock Nate Diaz out. Like you said, dude, Nate Diaz right. is a yeah, I was gonna dog. Because not many people ever have. Uh, ever. <laughs> I've seen that man fight Leon um, Edwards. And that gash on his forehead, first of all, all of the cuts that he's gotten in all of his fights are crazy. Right. But I thought he was going to bleed out when he was fighting Leon Edwards. And he, yeah, and he was like, he's, even when you think you're kicking the shit out of him, he's still dangerous. Like you saw him clip Leon in the end of that with that fucking two piece straight down the pipe and then fucking point at him. But uh, he just doesn't have the power. That's the thing about Nate. Right is I don't think he's gonna finish Jake either. But it Jake has a, that dog in him. Yeah, but it could be a fun technical challenge for Jake in the same way that I think Anderson was. But that's the thing is like hands and technically Anderson's better, dude. Because mm -hmm. Anderson, he has that timing and that you know spacing. Like he is a master of hands. Where Nate's more of just a brawler. Like you can hit Nate way easier than Anderson. And I have heard some people say they've sparred with Nate boxing and that he does throw from very odd and awkward angles. Right. So he does have like that technical background to him, but he's still super lengthy. Right. He, and, and he was still a jujitsu player when he started. Yeah. Yeah. But I think he still has hands. Right. Yeah. I think it'd be a good fight. I don't really see either one of them knocking each other out. I do see Jake Paul winning a boxing match. Yeah. What about an MMA fight, though? That's way more interesting because if it goes to the ground at all, I think Nate would. Triangle the shit out of him. Yeah. Or yep. just, like, catch him in shit that Jake... Because I'm sure if he's offering that, he's training MMA stuff, jiu-jitsu or wrestling and stuff right now. But uh, Nate's so fucking vicious on the ground, dude. And I just think that he has the years of experience that Jake would fall short to. That's a smart fight for him to choose MMA, though, because or to call for, because Nate isn't necessarily one that's going to grab you and, like, pick you up and slam you, you know? Like... Like, if you knock him down, he's just going to lay down and wait for you to try to engage with him and stuff like he did to Masvidal, but... Well, and if and if you try to take him down, he'll let you. Yeah. Because the Diaz's believe that they can win from the bottom. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's interesting, but it's smart because it's not inherently just going to go to the ground because most of the time, Nate will also just, like, stand and fucking throw hands with you and shit. Well, and I think that Jake, that's where he thinks he, his best work would be, too. Right, so I think feet. it would make yeah. sense that he wouldn't really necessarily try to take him down unless he got tired. And Nate's not necessarily going to throw, like, fucking crazy head kicks like Leon Edwards might or, like, a real kickboxer. Like, he's still mostly just a boxer on the feet. He's not even going to block your calf kicks, bro. Nah. Like, he doesn't care. No, he like, doesn't he fuck. doesn't give a fuck <laughs> about his legs. That would, An MMA fight would be interesting, too, though, to see if, like, Jake throws, like, kicks and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I doubt be... it. <laughs> I, I really doubt Throws it. Throws a spinning wheel kick, knocks Dude. Nate the fuck out. Edson Barboza's in his ass. <laughs> that would be crazy. That'd be terrifying. Did you hear about the uh, new KSI match? No. KSI, on January 14th, will be fighting Dylan Dennis. In a boxing match? Boxing. That's bad for Dylan, bro. So... That's fucking bad for Dylan. Bad. Because I've seen that guy throw hands. It's, it's not good. It's not as good as it 
you would want it to be if you're having a boxing match. He's definitely uh, he's making his media tour right now. I don't think he's actually going to fight him. Because mm-hmm. Dylan's been out for, what, like two, three years now with his fucking leg injury or whatever? Yes. Yeah, and he's not a boxer. Like, and KSI clearly is a boxer. Yeah. They're working towards that, that KSI Jake Paul fight, man. One day, that's going to happen, and that's going to be, honestly, probably the most viewed boxing match of our generation. Yeah, for sure. And if he fights Dylan Dennis on the 14th, Dylan Dennis is in a world of trouble. Unless Jake was to fight, or uh, one of them was to fight, uh, well, Jake mostly, because he's the bigger pull, I think, was to fight, like, Canelo or somebody who's, like, a true boxer. That would be, a, I feel like, a big fight, because people, same as they used to watch Floyd, would want to see Jake get fucked up by him. True. I just don't think he does that before KSI. I think KSI yeah, I happens. Maybe Tommy Fury, right? But Tommy Fury also has, what, 10 wins? And yeah. so he's not really, like, super established. Because fighting Canelo is, like, that's, like, the top. Dude. That's the top. You got to be real fucking good to compete with that guy. And Jake's too big. Yeah. Like, Canelo had to yeah. work up to 175, I think, or 168. Jake has to cut to it. <laughs> well, Jake only cuts to, like, what? Like, 180, m- like, max, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. Like, he's not going down to 175. If he is, dude, he'd be a lean, but lean boy. It would be interesting to see, though, just because, like, Logan versus Mayweather. Mayweather's extraordinarily, like, better small, like better and much smaller than Logan. True. Uh, and you saw that, like, in the fight. Like, at some point, I do feel like, technique-wise, is it would be it would still be a very interesting fight to see Canelo. Cause For sure. He's fucking so clean. But Jake is so much better than Logan. That's like true. miles better. Yeah, Logan's just a fucking wild man. He's big and he likes to fight, man. Yeah, he likes to fight. He likes to yeah. put on a show. So I enjoy watching him. But yeah, I'm, I'm I am excited for this KSI Dylan Dennis fight if it does happen. There's a petition right now <clears throat> um, to give Dylan Dennis the death penalty. Um, and it has you know, like he, if he loses, he just no, dies? just in general, just in general. <laughs> For what? Because people hate Dylan Dennis. Uh, I mean, he is kind of a fucking goober, but... It has 800 signatures. That's incredible. Yeah. That's fucking fun. <laughs> That'd be terrifying. Could you imagine if you could actually do that? you just, like, see somebody, and if you get enough signatures, it's like, sorry, man, we, uh... We gotta, we gotta kill you. <laughs> this people is democracy. Said it. <laughs> Talking at the same time. Yeah. That's the beauty without microphone, without headphones. Uh, oh, question though. I'm oh, sorry, this is slightly off topic from Jake Paul, but do you ever see that video when Logan Paul was preparing for being in slap competitions? No. Oh. In Russia? Yeah, he was going to like go and do some slap shit. This is like years ago when he was still like being a boxer. But uh, he like hired a guy to come out and like give him technique on slapping. And the guy was like, well, you got to slap me first. Uh, you know, so I like know what we're working with. And Logan knocks him the fuck out. Really? Like, like falls on his face. And this guy's got to be like 250, 300 pounds, like a big man. And Logan starches this dude. Uh, wow. And afterwards, it's actually kind of interesting because, you know, you always see someone get knocked out and the other person's like, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. But it's like somber. Like he knocks him out and you can tell like everyone's uncomfortable. Like, oh. Everyone's like, ooh. Nice. And Logan even is sitting there like, oh. I didn't really like that. And that's, he's like, I don't want that to happen to me. And that's why he didn't enter those slapping competitions. Wow. Yeah. I, dude, out of all the combat sports, that's the one I would do never. Yeah. Like, I would fight an MMA fight against fucking Francis and Ganu before I, I would, before I get slapped by a 400 pound man and can't defend myself. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Like, at least if I was fighting Francis, I can turtle. Like, I can at least, like, shell and try to be like, please don't kill me that bad. I think that stat they throw out for Francis all the time is kind of bullshit. You know what I'm talking about? Where they're like, Dana said it at a press conference, like being, we measured his force and it's like 129,000 units. Like they don't even say what kind of units, they just say units. And then he's like, that is the equivalent of being hit by a Ford Escort uh, going full speed. Like as Full fast speed? As, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like that's not possible. Because like if Francis hit somebody that hard, their head would fucking cave in. Like it's a, like you can't like if a Ford Escort hit you going full speed, dude. Yeah, everything's breaking in you. Like maybe thirty miles an hour. Right? Yeah, but, but full not... speed, like one hundred and twenty. Can you look up how fast those things go? Do you have your phone on you? Yeah. Look up how fast a Ford Escort, because those aren't they're not. It's a Ford Escort that you said, right? Yeah. So it's they're not like trucks, but they're like big ass SUVs. 
I know this because I drove a Ford Escort home one time before I even had my permit. I was on a date with this girl, and uh, she lived out in Nampa, which is about 30 miles, thirty minutes away from Boise. And we went to a, a date. We had a double date um, where we went to G.I. Joe Retaliation or whatever the fuck. I'm sorry, man. And I, I wouldn't have gone on another date with you after that. Oh, she didn't. <laughs> um, and she was like, can you bring someone for my friend? This makes it worse. I brought my gay friend, right? Like, And I was like, yeah, here you go. Um, so then we hung out until like Clutch. 9. We hung out until like 9 p.m. And then her mom comes in the room and she was like, hey, I'm going to take you guys home. So I said, okay. So her mom's driving and like 10 minutes into the drive, bro, she start, she's like pulling over off, off to the side of the road and like throwing up bad, right? Yeah. And she, she looks back and she goes, uh, she asks – her cousin is who's the girl that went on the double date with us. At this point, my gay friend went home, and she asks her cousin. She says, uh, "Do you have your permit?" And her cousin goes, "No." And she asks me. She goes, "Chandler, do you have your permit?" And Chandler wanted to look like a little fucking Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Was like, "Yeah, I got my permit." Did you not? I did not have my. That's permit. That's amazing. Yes. The only the only driving experience I had was on the back roads in my mom's Dodge Neon. So did you even know like the rules of the road? I enough. Like I'll tell you, dude, I'll tell you what. I knew I needed to go the speed limit, um, and stay in my lane, and use my blinker. Um, but a Dodge Neon is much different than a Ford Escort, right? How yeah. fast does a Ford Escort go? Uh, top speed one sixteen. No way, Francis punches that hard. Yeah, that's right. zero yeah. way. Yeah. Um. So she keeps pulling off. Fly across the fucking the ring, dude. It would be, in your, like you're saying, their heads would literally explode. Yeah. Like, there would be no more of that person. It would be like when Venom Page fucking need, who was that, Gleason Tebow, I think. You know what I'm talking about? When he literally caved part of his skull in right here. Oh, I did not like know that. Him, yeah, and he falls on the ground and covers his head, and afterwards they sent out an x-ray because, like, the, his forehead literally, like, caved in in the shape of his knee. Yikes! Yeah. Um... So anyway, so her mom's driving, right? And she's like, Chandler, do you have a permit? And I go, yeah. And so she she goes, hey, you know, I'm going to make up a name for this girl, Shaylee, right? She goes, hey, Shaylee, uh, I'm going to drive to your aunt's house and I'm going to get some NyQuil. And I was like, NyQuil? That's like for like sleeping. Shout out NyQuil. And so we get to her aunt's house. She takes NyQuil. She starts driving again. Five minutes later, she pulls over, throws up, opens my door and says, you're driving. Now, I am still probably 30 minutes away from my house, okay? So, were you scared or were you like, I got this? Oh, dude. Like classic Chandler confidence? Like, I got this. I can do this. Oh, I thought I had it, right? (laughs) And then I started driving and I was like, oh, this thing is different. Um, I took a a corner at 30 miles an hour uh, because I didn't know that you were supposed to slow down to 15. Like a hard 90? A hard 90 at 30 miles an hour, dude, going into a fucking neighborhood. (laughs) Um, and <laughs> we were going down a hill at one point and like, it's, it's going green, yellow, red. I panic, dude, slam on the brakes, <laughs> fucking stop. We stop at the light. I just look back and I go, sorry, the driving school isn't that good. Uh, <laughs> I made it home. Was she panicked at all? Or was she just NyQuil'd out like fucking, I don't know, dude, they're Islander. Um, so I think that she's probably seen war. So I think when she's in a crazy car with me, she probably doesn't give a shit. But and that could be racist. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but they're cool people, man. They're cool people. She was the girl. That girl was really good at basketball. That's that's what attracted me. Was she was like a hooper. Tight. Um. Yeah, man. Uh. So Dave, let's do a little tournament of fools, huh? Dead air. This is a new. <laughs> This is a new segment we're doing called Tournament of Fools. It's going to show up in 2022, or 2023, I mean. Excuse me. Um, here's what it is. is I'm going to introduce Tournament of Fools. I'm going to say, welcome to Tournament of Fools, and then you're going to sing the theme song, okay? Okay. And then uh, I'm going to give you what the tournament is, and we'll go into it. And I think you're actually going to like it. And now welcome to the Tournament of Fools. da 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 da, da. Tournament of Fools! With David Jansen. Okay, Dave. Mm-hmm. So, Tournament of Fools. You are the first person I ever did the Tournament of Fools with, um, if you remember, we, when we did the Bobby Lee versus Brendan Schaub. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's essentially the same thing. I'm going to give you a ranking. Okay. Um, there are eight contestants, and I sent these to your boy Cougar last night to rank them. Okay, Tight. so I gave him Tight. a random things, and I told him, judge these things or people based off of their 
warrior-ness. Okay. Okay? Okay, I like this. I'm in. Yeah, I know. There's eight contestants. I'll start at eight, and I'll work my way up to one. Okay. And this is the most cougar thing, because uh, at eight, he put a breast cancer survivor. Okay? That, that's a warrior, for sure. But it's red pill shit, because the fact that she's the lowest. The rest are <laughs> men. Okay. Cougar's a misogynist. Um, number seven is Damar Hamlin. Do you know who Damar Hamlin is? That is that the guy that just had a heart attack? Yep. Yeah. Got hit, went into cardiac arrest. Okay. Uh, and then when he woke up, the first thing he did was grab a pen and paper and ask, did we win the game? That's gangster as fuck. Warrior, right? Number six, Liver King. Number, number uh, five, Road Warrior Animal. Uh, he's the wrestler from back in the day that used to have like the spiked um, shoulder pads. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you should look him up. You okay. should look him up. Okay. Uh, Road Warrior Animal. He's very strong. Uh, he was like a power lifter, and I think he like could. Squ- I'm very strong. Yeah, he could squat a lot and bench a lot, and he's a very okay. strong guy. Okay. <laughs> Road Warrior. <laughs> Number four, Andrew Tate. Mm. Number three, Rocky. Okay. Yeah, I like the character. Number two. David Goggins. Okay. Number one, Genghis Khan. Okay. Okay. <laughs> not, and, and think about it, it's not his army, it's just Genghis Khan himself. Okay. Okay. So, first matchup, we have number one versus number eight. And I feel like this joke writes itself, to be honest. Genghis Khan versus a breast cancer survivor. <laughs> How do you think this one goes, Dave? You, uh, think, Gen- he, you think he just kills her? You think that's all he's. Think that's all he's aiming after? I don't think he just kills her. <laughs> uh, I think Genghis Khan does a lot worse than kills her. I think he pretty much enslaves her because that's kind of what his people did. Oh. Uh, like they like. There's a reason that they say that even if it's not entirely true, that statistic that's like one fifth of all of Asia is related to Genghis Khan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I again, I imagine that statistics might be some bullshit or whatever, but I think the sentiment still exists. Like Genghis Khan and his people too, but him specifically was a fuck machine, dude. And mm-hmm. like they just show up outside of places and be like, you "Either join us or we'll kill all of you." Uh, and so I feel like, you know, hey. I've heard a crazier stat. I've heard that Genghis Khan's DNA is found in four percent of all males on Earth. That's fucking terrifying. Isn't that crazy? That's fucking four percent of all males on Earth. Jesus Christ! I hope I got some Genghis Khan in me. You know that conqueror. Same dude. <laughs> Especially if I'm up against a fucking breast cancer survivor. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a hard. That's a hard matchup for the breast cancer survivor. It's makes tough. Me, makes me feel bad just being like, nah, fuck you. But like, that's Genghis Khan. It's always tough. One versus eight. You know, yeah. like we've done this yeah. every time. One usually wins. You know, one is one for a reason, you know, and eight is eight for a reason. So unless Genghis Khan wouldn't uh, pillage and plunder and rape because uh, if she's had that mastectomy, maybe not. Maybe he's not into that. Well, he'd at least kill her. Oh, yeah. you're like, you got to yeah. kill that person. He'd be yeah. like, yeah, I'll kill her. I think even if she I don't even think you'd have to say you'd have to kill that person. You just, <laughs> just would. do it. You just kill her. <laughs> just no. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I'd agree with you. I'd say that Genghis Khan probably goes, takes that moving on to, he moves on to the next round. Um, next matchup, we have number four versus number five, Andrew Tate versus road warrior animal. Let me look up a picture of road warrior animal. Um, Andrew Tate, obviously famous kickboxer warrior right now with the things that he's going through, the charges that may or may not be true. And uh road warrior animal, you know? Dude, once you see how badass this guy looks, it's going to be over. It's all about looks. <laughs> well, it's, that's part of it, right? Dude, look at this guy. Check that out. Oh, this guy looks like a fucking guy that'd be in war. He has, like, spikes on his pads, and he wears, like, face paint and shit. <laughs> he was a professional bot, um, power lifter, I think. He's a professional wrestler, you know, so he's an animal. Yeah. Definitely a warrior. Yeah. But uh, it, this is a no holds barred kind of fight. Yeah, Road Warrior Animal might win. You think so? Uh, well, because I believe Andrew Tate. You know, he's a fucking. He was a world champion kickboxer, so obviously the first inclination is to go with him. But that guy's very large, and I feel like there does come a point where, like, it's like when you saw Connor fighting the mountain. It's like, oh, he's kind of getting the mountain. But even uh, 
uh, Half Thor said, like, well, I couldn't, like, grab him. He's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? He's yeah. like, if I could, like, grab that guy, he would it'd be like the Hulk and Loki. He'd just kind of, like, swing him around and bash his fucking head around. So if that guy's, like, huge, that's definitely a thing. Also, Andrew Tate, this is also the reason I don't think he'll ever actually fight Jake Paul. He, uh, he's got bad eyes. Mm-hmm. Like, he has, like, retina problems, and I think if he takes a whole lot of damage to his eyes, he's not going to see any more ever. He'll uh, never fight those guys. Yeah. It's not like... I think he's too he, old, man. Well, and if he loses, it, that's his whole brand. He, he loses down. too much. Yeah. 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 Um, Road Warrior Animal, just for the stats, 6'1", um, 320 pounds. Holy shit. Yeah. Of straight muscle, dude. You know that what? Guy. I'm going to go with the top G. You're going to go with the top I'm G? I'm saying top G's got it. He'll, he'll put some hands and some feet on him. He's got some fucking... Some good technique. I also am going to take top G here. Um, I think Road Warrior Animal would put up a pretty good fight. Yeah. But... I think that Tate's called the Cobra for a reason. I yeah. think when push comes to shove, that motherfucker will not play by the rules. Yeah. Obviously, you know, in in jail right now because he's not playing by the rules. Well, uh, and <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw his brother was talking about him and the difference in them as fighters because uh, Tristan's a big boy. He was talking about how he's like a he's like a tank, like a brawler. Like he'll brawl with you, but he'll you know you're gonna catch him and stuff. Where Andrew was world champion because he's he's harder to hit mm. and to like get a hold of and stuff. He's more elusive, um, smarter. Some may say, yeah, more technical, way more technical. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go with the that top G. Yeah, I'll take I'll take the top G in his Bugatti. <laughs> um, have you seen the videos of him dancing? Yeah, I have. He's, yeah, he's a good, good ass dancer. dancer. Yeah, I always love when people edit that into the back of that. And they're like, "What color is the RB Bugatti?" <laughs> <laughs> what a fascinating character, bro. He is. He is. I mean, being s- able to dance and move like that though lends itself to lends itself to fighting for sure, though, because like that sort Lomachenko, of right? Bo- yeah, that body control. Even fucking Valentina, you see the shit she can do. It's like there's a reason she's so good. All right. Next matchup. This is a good one. The next two are actually, I mean, the next one's really good. Rocky versus the Liver King. Rocky. Hands down easy. Fuck the Liver King, man. This now, one... let's talk about why the Liver King is a warrior, right? He's a warrior because this man has gone through public scrutiny mm-hmm. for the fact that he does use steroids. A lot. A lot. Of a steroids. lot of them. Not just steroids. Like, multiple types, multiple brands, like, for different purposes. Like, juice to the fucking gills. And it's wild that people believed he didn't. Yeah. People yeah. really believe. Like, people who knew, obviously, were like, he's obviously doing steroids. But the vast, like, general population was like, well, he says he doesn't do steroids. Dude, I was, he doesn't do steroids. I was talking to medical professionals in my family, showing him pictures of that guy. And they're like, oh, you know, I think if you did this and that, you could achieve that naturally. I was like, no. No. It's not possible. Look it at, is not possible. Look at the peck. At look at the top of 40 this. years old or however old he is. I don't care how much fucking liver you eat. I do like Liver King's Snapchat, though, I'll tell you that. Mm. His Snapchat's pretty interesting. He has this thing called Don't Be a Little Bitch Thursdays. <laughs> Uh, where he tells you not to be a little bitch and get out of your comfort zone. Uh, and his new thing now is, I think he's he still has the liver, right? Liver is king. Mm. But he's moving into testicles. Mm. He's been posting on his Snapchat a lot how he's eaten one, at least one large testicle a day. Because here's what he said. Here's what he said, right? He said, while I'm transitioning off my gear... Mm. I need to up my testosterone intake so I can continue to have as much testosterone. Thus, we need to eat more testicles. So, do you think he's actually just going to keep doing gear and then try to convince people he's off of it and he's just eating testicles and that's what's giving them testosterone? A hundred percent. So, he's just going to lie more? Yes. Uh, yeah. Which okay. sucks because Liver King seems to be a very nice guy and I do agree with like the ancestral tenants. I think that they're actually pretty smart things to try to live your life by, like bond, cold, connect, um, move, whatever, eat, sleep. Here's right? the thing, though. I think he's kind of a pushover. Like, I don't think, like, he's a warrior in the sense that I do think he works out pretty hard. Because, like, obviously, even if you're on gear, you have to fucking do some crazy shit to look like, like that. that big. Yeah. Um, but he's also not a very, like, tall guy. Like, he's pretty short. Um, and, like, you'll notice a lot of the times when people, like, say stuff he doesn't like he's very passive about it like he's not Hmm. like a fighter that was gonna like nate diaz slaps fucking whatever one of jake paul's friends or one of the nelk boys people somebody he slapped the shit out of somebody that was related to a a podcast i don't know if you ever saw that um oh yeah 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 the full send yeah i know what you're talking about yeah the reporter Mm -hmm. uh and i think that that 
that is like the not that people should do that obviously but like that's a fighter to me like somebody that's fought a lot that's actually just gonna be like you know what i will fuck you up if you don't stop uh and it's like people shouldn't do that but when you're somebody like nate diaz that makes sense versus like if you see when uh brian johnson was on h3h3 and they started talking about like liver king and ethan was kind of being an asshole like hey man like do you have to have sex in certain positions because you're so big and I just want to know what that's been? And Liver King's just like, yeah, we don't talk about Liver Queen in this context. Um, I don't find this to be a very fun game and this isn't very interesting, but it was very like nice about it versus I feel like if he was that warrior, that animal, he would have had a lot more of that roid rage to jump down Ethan's yeah. throat about it, it's you true. know? Man, I could never live my life as a troll, man. I could like. Either. Being being like Ethan Klein, like I could never do shit like that. Even... He's just a sad man in general. <laughs> he should have been on the Warrior list. No, he's gonna be on the biggest pussy list, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll probably take Rocky here too. I think Rocky's gonna be too hard to put away. Yeah, man, the character of Rocky is. Uh... He's I pretty saw, badass. Saw him fight Dolph Lundgren, bro. I, well, Apollo Creed, man, and I don't think I've ever seen Rocky win a fight. But I've never seen him quit. I've, I've never. I've also never seen him lose a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'll take Rocky with you. Okay. Um, number two versus number seven. David Goggins versus Demar Hamlin. Goggins. For Not sure. even hard. Goggins. For Not sure. even hard. That, that that shit about Demar Hamlin's pretty crazy, and I hope he like gets better because that's a fucking wild incident. But Goggins is a seal, man. Like, and he the things he's done has done are so much more extreme than like average people granted being a football player is probably pretty fucking brutal did you see the hit yeah i did yeah so he was actually a backup um, really mm-hmm. so demar hamlin's a backup and micah hyde i think is the other safety who was injured that was he was playing for so i kind of think that it's because he hasn't taken a lot of those hits recently mm. because the guy who hit him's name is t higgins and t higgins really isn't much bigger than demar hamlin but he says that he has like it says online that he has like eight pounds on him, and I think like one or two inches, and that's probably closer to like ten to fifteen pounds. Right. And I just think if you haven't been taking those hits um, at the, to this point of the season, and it's so cold outside, mm. like there's a lot of factors that go into that. I think there's also something to be said about like there is the potential like if you're getting hit in the chest, like freak accidents to send you into cardiac arrest and stuff like that. And For sure, maybe he has heart condition. Or something like that, too, you know. But you know who else has a heart condition? David Goggins. David Goggins. Uh, and you know what? He still did everything. <laughs> <laughs> Including wrote a second book. That's amazing for someone <laughs> who couldn't read or write, dude. Like, so he's not yeah. only a warrior in, like, the physical aspect, but his mental game, which, you know, your mental game comes with you pushing yourself physically to the limits. But for him to push himself that far to, like, read and write now when he couldn't, to write two books, yeah. Man, and when you run a marathon on broken legs, like <laughs> he's gonna be a tough out, man. Yeah. All right, moving on to the second round. By the way, all of the top seeds went through to the second round. So let's just throw that out there. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that's it's that's pretty rare though for this podcast. <laughs> Typically, we do have an upset. Might be a skewed list a little bit there though. <laughs> well, there's a breast cancer survivor, so <laughs> her name is probably Sarah, and she probably lives in Aspen. Uh, Represent. <laughs> Represent uh, Sarah. Genghis Khan versus Andrew Tate. Now let's let's think about this, right? Okay. Genghis Khan, I believe five eight. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how thick that boy was. Tate, I think it has to be at least six foot. Right, mm-hmm. world class boxer. Yeah, kickboxer. Um, kickboxer from this era. Who do you take? Does Genghis Khan get a sword? I'm thinking hand to hand on okay. that. Okay, uh, that might have been early. That might have been easy, good to clarify before, because you know if that breast cancer survivor has a sword or uh, a gun, <laughs> she's like, "I got a gun, bitch." Um, you think that sword's gonna help you? Check out this iron bullet right to your dome. I think that, uh, and not my boobs. Genghis Khan. Do you know why? Because why? if there's somebody that's the true top G. It's top G gangy. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like all those things that Andrew Tate is accused of. Genghis Khan did. That's, like, that's we're, true. It's not even a question. That's true. <laughs> Plus the mm. murder uh, of thousands, millions of people. Well, he's probably much more experienced. 
right? Like with well, his actually, whole life is war, right? Actually murdering people, like yeah. Genghis Khan, definitely that has the experience. Yeah. But how big were the people he was fighting? Now I don't want to again. I'm not trying to seem racy out here, but they're all Asian, right? He's Mongolian, right? It's not like like five eight is big over there, right? Well, I think the Khans made it to to Europe. Oh, really? Yeah, like Dude. from Asia all the way over to Europe. Like their empire, I think, is one of the biggest ever. Now, there was a point where Genghis Khan was no longer around that they were still, and it was kind of like, I think, became kind of the fall of them. But there were other leaders and stuff that led them to uh, to kind of the more European places and stuff. So, like, they, hmm. they fought all varieties of people, really. And they also had elephants. Um People tell me that that's not true, but I will never, I will never agree with them. I think that they had elephants. Well, they mostly used horses, and in you know, pachyderms, big, big white pachyderms. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know where I get that. Dude. Fuck I, it, I believe you. I, thanks. Uh, I I just think I saw that in a movie one time. Like someone's army was using elephants, and I was like, "That's Genghis Khan." Was it in the Lord of the Rings movie? Probably. <laughs> Probably. That's Genghis Khan. Probably. Um. So who are you taking here, Connor, Tate? Genghis Khan, for sure, the real top G. I think I also have to take Khan here. Hell yeah, I think you I do. also got to take Khan here. All right, this this is possibly the best fight we've had so far. Okay. Rocky versus David Goggins. Ooh, that's a fucking wild fight. Goggins for sure, though, because... Do you think? Because here's, here's why. He has... Likely, probably, actually, potentially killed people. True. Um, and like you said, Rocky doesn't really win. And if there's somebody that's going to outlast Rocky, it's David fucking Goggins, man. He Because he is the person who has done stuff that makes Rocky look weak, and he's a real person. You know what I'm saying? Like, Rocky does some crazy shit punching that meat and running, but he mostly gets his ass kicked. And he's not real. And you're against the seal, man? Ooh. I just think, dude, there's something from being from, like, fucking Philly, just tough, just in the fucking ring and punching pigs that are hanging from the ceiling, man. You're but, just... you know, and, and I would give an advantage to Rocky if he could hear his song. But, <laughs> but, but the thing is, when David Goggins broke the pull-up record, do you know what he listened to? For seven hours straight, you watch the Rocky scene. Right? The he listened to the Rocky theme. <laughs> the theme. The theme for seven hours, fucking straight, uh, to help break that record. So that song would also be a benefit to him. I feel. So. But if if Rocky had like headphones, right? If he had like AirPods. Here's the so thing that though, Goggins see, couldn't. He, Goggins, Goggins doesn't need him though. That's the thing too. You, he's gonna be in his head like. That's true. I'm just saying that if Rocky could actually hear this, that's right. This motherfucker ain't shit. David Goggins, you think you're gonna beat me? I do. Hell no. <laughs> Yeah. Hell no. Yep. <laughs> I'm taking Rocky. Okay. How do we Rocky. how do we settle this dispute? We flip a coin. Okay. You got a coin? Well, Justin and I played rock paper scissors. Would you rather do that? Uh, you know, Rochambeau it. Do you have a coin? Not on me. Okay. I'm representing the Goggins. I'm representing Rocky. One two three shoot. Okay. One two three shoot. Hell yeah. That's Rocky. That's Rocky. Sorry. That's David. Rocky, baby. <laughs> I've let That's the name Rocky. down. I've let the name down. See, I couldn't just let you push Goggins all the way through. I understand that he's a he's a champion. But a Rocky, seal, bro. I've never seen Rocky quit, bro. I've never seen Goggins quit. Me neither. But like everything you say about Rocky, Goggins has got because he's the real Rocky. But here's the truth. Here's the truth of it all. I've seen everything Rocky's done. I've never seen everything Goggins has done. <laughs> nope. Right? And yeah. he's probably done some crazy shit. But I'm saying I know what Rocky's done. I know what he's capable of. Goggins might quit in his off time. Now, David Goggins, if you're listening to this, please uh, don't come and kill me. He's going to run to your house, bro. Because I know that you don't quit. I get it, right? You're the savage of all savages. You're the true top, top G. But he's going to clip that and listen to it while he's running. He this probably- motherfucker thinks that I can't do it. You don't know me, son. You don't know me. Who's going to carry the boats and the logs? <laughs> all right. 
championship round. <clears throat> Genghis Khan <sighs> versus Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it so much better. Yeah, but I still think Rocky has a chance, man. You no. don't think there's any case for Rocky, dude? When there was a point, uh, there's a legend about Genghis Khan that uh, these people were traveling across Asia to get somewhere, and they saw these great white mountains, and they're like, "Whoa, we've never seen mountains like that. Let's go explore them." And they so they did. They went over to the mountains, and they realized as they got closer, closer, those weren't mountains. Those were piles of bones. Oh! Millions of bodies stacked into what looked like mountains from far off of bones because Genghis Khan and his people rode through. Now, I know that you're saying Genghis Khan by himself, but, like, some amount of that's got to be your boy just hacking and slashing and shooting people up. Um, true. So I got to say, it's got to be the Khan, man. The great... And powerful destroyer of worlds, Genghis Khan. Because you know who Rocky's probably related to? Who? Big Daddy Genghis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. That's probably true. Um, I think that there is a case to be made for Rocky here. Now, those pile of bones, I agree. You know what helped him get those pile of bones? Elephants. Okay. No. Yeah. Horse archers. but And elephants. Okay, elephants. Yeah. Elephants so, ran those people down. Yes. That's what I'm saying. And okay. Genghis Khan wrote on the back of them. Also, Rocky, he's from Philly, man. All right? There's something about being Philly strong, about being tough, about being somewhere that it's fucking cold. Mm -hmm. He's training all the time. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't quit, man. That's the thing about the people who Genghis Khan was probably fighting. They probably are quitters. They're not fucking Rocky, okay? They're not training in the meat locker all the time. Well, they killed people. We don't know that. Maybe it was just Genghis Khan killing people. Maybe no, everyone else well, wanted to be no. wanted to be peaceful. We and Genghis Khan that. was like, "We have elephants." You're gonna tell gonna... me Romans didn't kill people? Well, he wasn't trying to fight Rome, was he? He was. They he? they fought some amount of Romans. Yeah. Did they lose? Uh, that I don't know. Because uh, I know that again, that was near the end of their empire. So I think they did kind of run into a wall with Rome. But here's here's the rub of it, man. I think Genghis Khan is fat. Um, I think he's the leader, and I think that he's only <laughs> interested in fucking and sucking. I think he's going to suck and fuck Rocky, bro. I think <laughs> that Rocky's going to take his ass because Rocky doesn't quit. So we're going to have to Rochambeau this, too. Yeah. And, Is it best and... two out of three for the championship? All right. I'll do that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Normally, we do ones and outs. So this is a little bit of a rule change, but I don't mind it. One, two, three, shoot. Ready? One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. All right, all right. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. Oh, shit, we're one and one. One, two, three, shoot. Fuck! Yeah, I knew your strategy. I knew your strategy. I see that shit. Like, chess, baby. Rocky. Top G, call me Andrew Tate. <laughs> Rocky, man. All right, Genghis Khan, ultimate warrior of all time. Thank you, Cougar, for the, for the rankings. Thank you. Shout out, Coug. You're the man. Speaking of Cougar, um, as you know, we've been talking about Cougar is... Balls deep in the Bible. Not literally. Balls deep. <laughs> Not literally. Um, but he is so deep that there's gravy coming He's out. He's being so. like immortal technique. What's the bar? I jerk off in books and give life to words. And there it is. <laughs> That's essentially what God did with the Bible, man, is he jerked off into it. Yep. And thus the words of God came out. <laughs> Sacrilege. <laughs> so... Uh, the first episode you're ever on, Dave, is mm -hmm. called Fuck You, David. Yeah, hell yeah. We had already been saying Fuck You, David yeah. um, before that. Of course. And so that is your name forever now. Mm -hmm. uh, and your first podcast you were on, you were talking about Lady Luck, mm -hmm. which is this god essentially that you made. Can you explain Lady Luck a little bit? Yeah, Lady Luck is just sort of a kind of a an entity to represent something that is not as like... It's not an established religion because I hate a, a kind of organized religion. I don't, I don't, I shouldn't say hate. It's a strong word, but I dis have a big disliking for. Um, and so Lady Luck was kind of like the idea of like just create your own entity, and as long as you uh, are still using that entity for good, um, you should like believe in it. And it was something to give structure uh, within my own life at the time to like sort of 
play with like praying to and believing in and giving credit beyond myself because I've always struggled with gods because it's like I'm the one doing the stuff. I want some credit too because I'm a little bit selfish like that. And so it's something to kind of get beyond that and give a little more credit to and be significantly more grateful for um, I think is sort of the general thought behind it. Did you ever really believe in Lady Luck or did you always know that it was some delusion that you were? I tried. Okay. For a little while I did try and I was like trying to do like rituals if you will to give to pay homage and pay respect to Lady Luck. Um, And it was kind of interesting and I kind of got a little bit the idea of why people pray like that. Now, the thing with praying that I've always wanted is somebody to talk back. Mm-hmm. And I've never had that. And that's right. probably, if that does happen, you probably have to be, you know, like fucking operating Thetan level 43, totally gone clear before you get to hear them speak to you. But uh, Creating Scientology, baby. Uh, but, um, yeah, it was just kind of interesting. And uh, I think I necess- didn't have ever really, like, believe fully in lady luck like people do with christian gods or other gods but uh yeah it was an interesting idea to play with at least so how did that work out for you like did you stop believing did you kind of start looking into other stuff like um yeah i started looking more into other stuff like the bhagavad gita and some stuff like that and even just kind of thinking about christianity a little bit but and at some point, I was also like, it's delusional, you know? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's as a fucking preposterous notion to create your own religion, if you will, even though that's what it seems like a lot of people have done in the past. And Well, and, I and also, today, bro. Well, I also don't like the idea that if that's the case, if I'm interpreting, because I was, like, making rules and laws, like a law of lust and stuff like that for this god to create my to create more structure in my life and to avoid doing the bad habits and things that I had done in the past. So, but that would technically I think to a certain extent make me a prophet for that god, true, because I'm interpreting the, you know, the uh fucking scripture and whatnot and I didn't like that cuz I don't think I'm I don't like to view myself as that powerful. You're kind of speaking for God at that point if you're yeah. making laws. I agree with that. Yeah. Um so where are you kind of at now with all of that stuff? Like, um, you know, I don't really know if I'm being honest. Uh, and I think that's a totally acceptable place to be. Like, I think a lot of people try to pretend like they know or like they have an answer uh, or an exact location for their faith. And I for sure don't. I want to believe in something because I feel like it gives more purpose and idea to life. And I like that. But uh, in the end, it is because I've grown up atheist and against religion. It is hard for me to ever fully believe in anything like that. So right now, I'm kind of still in that stage of being agnostic and exploring the lifestyles of people who were spiritual, um, but not directly exploring their gods. If that makes sense. What do you mean by that? Um, well, like with, you know, I'm kind of on a samurai kick right now in studying, uh, like the Hakakura and, um, the book of five rings isn't really about religion necessarily, but in the samurai lifestyle, there was, uh, a religion, if you will. Um, and so it's interesting to explore kind of how they live and their relationship with God more than exploring the God in itself. It's kind of like the the Bhagavad Gita too has a lot of examples of like how you should live. So like that to me is more interesting of like trying to live like those people did that believed in that God rather than being like I f- I'm in I believe in Lord Krishna fully now and right. I will you know do everything for that religion. Um, do you know if they're like because I know that we've kind of we were talking about the Hagakuda. Um, earlier, do you know if there's like a god in that book? Um, so they have like Zen Buddhism, um, okay. and uh, like Taoism, and there's one other one that I can't fucking remember the name of. And they're not, they don't necessarily talk, I'm sure those religions do a little more, but they don't directly in the book talk about what god it is. Mm. It just talks about sort of the understanding and worship of 
your deity and your um, entity and paying respect to that. Um, so they don't directly talk about a, a god. No, they just talk about religion. Do you think you're more open now to like there possibly being a real higher power? Or do you think that's something that's still kind of like shut off for you? Um, no, I absolutely am. Like, I mean, I feel like if I'm willing to believe in aliens, I have to be willing to believe in a god a little bit, right? I think it's one of the two, man. I yeah. think it's either god or aliens, but I, I don't really, to be honest, like science and evolution for me is kind of fallen by the wayside, and that's so crazy to say. But I just think that humans are so much drastically different than every other animal here. I think there has to be something to us. Right. Well, I but I did hear you talking to Cougar about, like, monkeys and kind of comparing us to monkeys and how, like, we came from monkeys and stuff. Apes. Yeah, but, apes. It, but that's not necessarily true because the way evolution is supposed to work, uh, as far as I understand it, is that we are on a s- similar evolutionary step as monkeys. So, like, both of us have branched out from something. It's not like monkeys came and then we came from monkeys. Uh, yeah. We both might have a common ancestor in the past. I forget about what class I was learning about this, but they call it, the, like, the common ancestor. I'm pretty sure is what they right, call it. Right, right. Um, but, again, I just feel like for us to go one way and us and someone to go the other way, and, again, we're so drastically different. Yeah. I feel like there has to be some sort of inter, like heavenly or d- like divine intervention. Yeah, and I happened. do, I do agree with you. It's either God or aliens. Like it seems like we are either like an experiment of something that came down and somehow altered our being to create the sort of brains that we have, or maybe there is a deity, um, an entity that, like a holy entity that did it. Um, so yeah, I'm in the same book. I don't, I don't really know, but it seems like. Something happened along the way, and you're right. It is absolutely hard to believe. Like, it was evolution. Granted, I still believe in evolution, but right, because um, like the concept of evolution makes sense. Uh, what about this though? Because this is something I've been thinking about. Survival of the fittest, right, is also like a concept inside of evolution. And if survival of the fittest really was that way in humans, I don't think we'd have any compassion. Um, I think that we would look around and see that we're just part of the animal kingdom, which there are some people who do this, right, who are like um, – because Cougar was telling me about like a couple of years ago in Iceland there was some sort of food problem or something, and so they were killing all the babies who had Down syndrome. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. But Cougar Woo! said that when he was like an evolutionist that he was like, yeah, you should absolutely do that because huh. like it's survival of the fittest. So if this baby is going to take away resources from the other baby and and that is really like it's like the Spartans they take all their like defected youth that had problems like that or like birth defects like physically and stuff and just throw them off cliffs. There's like a cliff they take them up and just bye baby yeah, and only the strongest. That's survival of the fittest, right? And so <laughs> to me I look at evolution and I'm like if that's true I really don't think humans would ever have like developed like real compassion and empathy for each other. Well, I think compassion's an evolutionary step because I think the only reason mm-hmm. we are able to do that and think that way is because we have evolved to the point where we can do exactly this where we don't have to worry about wolves eating us outside. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like life is so comfortable now and Similar to, like, if there's a food shortage and you see that primal savage come out in people, like, the only reason we're able to be as casual and relaxed and, like, let's take care of everybody's feelings is because things are so so much easier now because of how we've evolved and what we've done with technology and created. Because, like, if we're living in a stick hut having to worry about hunting every day, we'd be much less worried about, like, loving each other. Versus, like, if I was in a stick hut and you come over and I'm worried about you taking my food, you're dying. I'm going to kill you. True. I definitely agree with that. But I think even in, like, the most dire of circumstances, humans are still good to other humans. And maybe – then that is a thing that, like, in nature – Bro? Uh, uh, to some, well, no, Should have seen Seattle. <laughs> True. <laughs> in 2020. <laughs> but, like, the Holocaust? Like, yeah. all the Jews who were together who were, like, put in those camps, which happened, Kanye. Um, like, they – all like worked together, you know, and like tried to help one another. Um, and like there's there's stories of so uh, there's stories well, of people like playing together and, and so giving to told. each other, right? You know, because it saying? probably like, didn't it didn't happen. I'm sure there were assholes in those camps that were kind of fending for themselves and taking people's food and and shit like that. Like that sort of shit's depicted in there's a movie called The Way Back that is a true story of these POWs that escaped from uh, one of the Holocaust camps and stuff and like traveled across uh, countries to get to uh, 
different place. I actually don't know if it was Naughty Camp. I should get that right. But uh, at some point, some POW camp, and they walked across, like, the mountains all the way into Tibet to be able to escape and shit. Like, did some crazy shit. And they did take care of each other, which is really cool. But there were people in those camps that were kind of more, like, in the same way that there were those slaves back in the day that, like, helped the masters. Um, right. And, like, run their house. You know, there's always going to be some amount of people that will suck up to their captors to be able to survive and stuff. Yeah, that's true. I don't know, man. I just, I kind of, I, it's just weird to me to think about. Like, if evolution yeah. is true, I just, I don't think that giving to someone else would ever feel good to you. And I think that whenever people give, they always feel great, mm. you know? But I, I do see how you're saying it's an it's an evolutionary step. So do you not believe in, like, evolution at all? Or just not in the sense of, like, humans are a total product of evolution? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, but do you, I, do you, like, you believe that evolution, like, with the birds and the Galapagos Islands, how well, they clearly. evolved yeah. to have different beaks and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we uh, studied that, and you can see it, right? And even, like, island dwarfism, right? That's a real thing. Yeah. So it's, like, things have to, like, adapt to their environments. But humans have always been guessing where the fuck humans come from. Like, we right. are the thing that we're like, where do we even, why are we here? Right. Like, like that's the big question. But I, but it, it's kind of interesting, too, though, because evolution isn't always survival of the, of the fittest. Or that term doesn't always necessarily mean, like, the biggest, strongest. Because, like, mosquitoes are from, like, you know, times when dinosaurs were around and stuff. You look at alligators, that's a fucking dinosaur. Uh, uh and they have, even though they're not like us with their brains and stuff, they have survived significantly longer throughout time than any sort of like human mammal type creature. Because they were fit for their environment. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. They evolved to be the uh, in a very high end creature for their environment. The apex of you know whether it's mosquitoes like the apex of in, uh, insects. Insects, right? Even though you know we kill them in one swipe, but it's like. They'll always be around longer than we will probably. Humans, though, it just seems like typically the bigger you are, the better. The faster you are, the better. The stronger you are, the better. Like typically yeah. it seems like no matter who you are as a human, you typically want to be like big and strong. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. Right. And like if we were trying to evolve to survive in an environment, it's weird that we evolved to like have significantly less body hair because we built – like housing and structure, like it's just weird the difference that uh, we took to get to where we are versus other creatures. Yeah, like and if bear. if it is real, we're just the weirdest things out there, man. Right. Um. Maybe elephants or dolphins could be up there if they were running fucking Atlantis down there, but doesn't that uh, doesn't that also kind of seem like a the thought of like where did we come from and that sort of sentience also seem like kind of a de evolution a little bit because like. It almost seems like a step back because like, you look at a bear. A bear's pretty apex, right? Like a bear or even a dolphin. Like it's pretty fucking apex for being an ocean creature. And it doesn't have to trouble itself with like that thought of mm -hmm. where did we come from and this and that. Like it doesn't have that angst. It just gets to fucking be the top. Well, I think that we've reached a point of, you know, whether it's through evolution or through God, um, of consciousness that we want to figure out where we come from. Because I think if we come from somewhere different than what science is telling us with the Big Bang, the whole story flips. Yeah. The whole story changes. Yeah. Right? At that point, you got to figure out, okay, why the fuck are we here then? Like, right. if the big like if the big Bang isn't real and all that shit isn't real, and, like, let's say, hypothetically, we live inside of a fucking dome or whatever the fuck, it's like, okay, well, who put the fucking dome there? Right. Right? Like, so... Yeah. <laughs> like, who created that? Yeah, and I agree. And I'm not saying that I believe that shit. I'm just saying, like... I don't, I I get what you're saying where you know it could be de-evolution and speculated as that, but I really think it's like humans trying to be like, okay, now we're so conscious, we need to know like, what are we doing here? Right, because it it seems like you're right. That sort of thought process has always existed. Like, even you know back with like the pyramids and shit like that. Like, it's weird to try to think about how those came about. Uh, because I th I think it's the like Cleopatra, Cleopatra is closer to you know like Julius Caesar in Rome than the building of the pyramids, uh, and I I don't remember there's like some phrase too like the building of the pyramids is closer to the time of the dinosaurs than it is Cleopatra like some shit like that. Like, That's so crazy. Like, yeah, dude. like Egyptian history is fucking wild uh, with all that creation. But yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Science history, like even though it's it's concrete to a certain point, it's always changing too. 
People yeah. are always discovering new things, and then you know we're gonna figure this out and figure that out and find this and find that. Well, religion's done that too. Old oh, Testament, true. New Testament, baby. Yeah. Or even like the different sects of religion, like LDS. I mean, we like can that. have a conversation off off the air about that because we're about an hour in anyway. Um, <laughs> but there's been a lot of tampering with religion, certainly. For um, sure. For sure. And. But I think that goes back to what you were saying, kind of like interpreting the word of God and potentially like false prophets, if you will. Yeah. Trying to create, get their spin on it or their share of it. Well, get this shit, right? So uh, you remember how long ago you told me that there's different versions of the Bible? And I was like, yeah, David, but like just because they say they're different versions doesn't mean they say different things. Yeah. And you were like, no, they wouldn't be different versions unless they said different things. Right. And I was like, you're wrong. Cougar has really opened my eyes to the fact that all of these new modern versions are bullshit. And here's why. So they were going off of the King James Version Bible forever, right? Like the old text, the old manuscripts, things like that. I think it's in the 1800s. I might be wrong. It might be a little bit earlier. But these two dudes came up um, named West, Westcott, Westcott and Hort. Um, and they found older manuscripts. Oh. Right, <laughs> and that they went in and then interpreted to use for like modern translations. Right, it's it's called Vitanicus and Cy- um, Cyanaticus or some shit like that. Are these two um, versions? And a lot of those versions are what the modern versions of the Bible use. And there's there's different shit in those Bibles. Like there's literally verses from the King James that are taken out mm. that are like, and it's it's pivotal shit. Like the last half of the book of Luke, um, the last chapter, it, it's it's empty. It's Yeah, it's not going to work. Ain't that just about a bitch. I mean, we're finishing up here anyway. But the last chapter of Luke, uh, verses 9 through 20, it, online, you'll see it says, oldest versions of this Bible, of this uh, of this passage, were not found in the oldest like translations. And the only two translations that don't have that section of Luke are Vitanicus and Sinaiticus. Huh. But every other version of the Bible around that time period has it. Yeah. So it's these people coming coming up and being like, "Hey, we're gonna take out shit from the Bible and and essentially eliminate or or devalue the deity of Christ." To me, that's what the whole world is about. It's about Christ came and he said, "Listen, you all are here saying that you're gonna save yourselves and you think you're gonna do enough good stuff and that's gonna get you into heaven." No, motherfucker, I'm gonna get you into heaven. Trust and believe in me. And who is Jesus? He's love. So what about all the time before that, then? What do you mean? Like, before Jesus. Like, what is all that? Because there was humans around for a long, long time before yeah. Jesus and all that sort of history. And it, you could say that, like, Judaism, right? Judaism could have gotten you into heaven. But there's also a lot of, like, deception trying to be placed already before that. Like, you had Nimrod with Babylon. And that's right. really where we get... Like pantheons and shit. Well, and that's... Babylon is really where we get a lot of world religions from. Mm. Roman gods, uh, Greek gods, pretty much all stemmed from Babylon. Hmm. So, and and there's just there's more into that. A lot of it's in Bible secrets. Camera's not on, but go check it out. Um, <laughs> where, where? <laughs> but yeah, man, I, to me that's what it that's what it seems like. But I'm glad that you're more open to uh, some sort of higher being. And yeah, power for sure. And, I think it would be. In the same way that I think it's a little bit ignorant to be like, I know absolutely this is the one religion. I think it's the same amount of ignorant to be like, absolutely there cannot be a God. If not, maybe a little more ignorant because like, that's a bold claim for just like a single human to make. You know what I mean? I absolutely agree, man. The only thing we know is that we know nothing. David, thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. I believe this is episode 44. Uh, next episode is going to be 45 with Kawhi Thompson, the Throne Samoan. David, you got any last words for these people? Um, be good. Love each other. Uh, just don't try to spread less hate. There's a lot of hate in the world, so let's try to spread less of that shit. <laughs> Love your neighbor. All right. Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye, bitches.